I wanted to kind of uh, ask you guys to shed some light on this, and I know that each of you have done your own part or chosen your own path on how to handle that situation. Where can we kind of find the, the balance on this issue? Well, first of all, we need to clarify something. The idea of seeing the deceased as being haram or forbidden based on the fact that the Prophet ﷺ ordered the deceased to be covered after the battle. The Prophet ﷺ did not order the deceased to be covered after the battle because it's haram to look at the dead. He ordered the deceased to be covered after the battle because it was a health issue. And secondly, the bodies of the deceased would have been harmed by the elements. I have a really serious problem sometimes when we take kind of this ultra, ultra hippie, no offense to anyone, kind of green, organic tafsir of everything the Prophet did. So seeing the deceased according to our ulama, because listen, traditionally, when to be honest with you, in the wars against the enemies of the Muslims, the Muslim leaders and their ulama allowed the dead enemies of the Muslims to be hung, for example, in Cairo for days as a lesson to like, don't try to attack this city, dude, or you will become a vulture buffet. Okay? So I'm, I'm not saying that we should hang bodies. Don't write that online. I'm just saying that the idea of looking at the dead as being forbidden is nonsense. Right? That, that's never something that was debated. The reason the Prophet had them covered was because of the elements, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and health issues. The second thing is there is no shara'i ruling on whether you should show the picture of this infant or not. This is not a halal or haram thing. This is an activism thing. Activism should be talked about. I shared a picture of this child because if you look historically, pictures have changed public psyche in a way that nothing else has. The napalm images of Vietnam transformed that war and made the American conscious wake up. Black people being sprayed with hoses and being bitten by dogs in Alabama actually unbelievably woke up quote unquote moderate liberals because liberalism itself is only worried about itself and being comfortable within its own realm. So it took that image to actually show people that what Wallace was doing in Alabama was a violation of any, any notions of humanity. The death of Malcolm and the image of Malcolm. Rodney King on March 3rd, 1991, wakes up the collective conscious of the hood across this country. So me personally, I understand that images affect people and they shake people. So that's my personal opinion. You know what? Who cares? This is my point. Like, if you don't want to show it, okay. If I want to show it, okay. But why all of a sudden, every little thing that happens, do we have to start to argue about it? Because online has made dysfunctional people functional. It has made ignorant people intelligent. It has given people who no one would care about their opinions the ability to suddenly have this place. And this is one of the signs of the hour that argument will increase. So. This is a waste of time, to be honest with you. There's no shara'i ruling. No one's going to like, Fit Council of North America, we're not going to like release a 43 page paper on, you know, should you show pictures or not. That's your personal decision. What we should be able to do is say, let's say I posted the picture, okay? And then someone hits me up like, would you put your son up there? Yes, I would. If that was my son, I would. I have no qualms about it. Because the greater good, in my opinion, will be accomplished, right? Well, I wouldn't put my son up there. Okay, fine, alhamdulillah. Like, I don't have to argue with you, man. Like, don't put a picture up there. It's the Syrians who are sharing these photos. They're the ones who are taking them. It's, it's the very similar it. to Black Lives Matter, right? I got in trouble because I said, black activists in Boston called me and said, please ask the Palestinian community in particular and the Muslims not to put Muslims Lives Matter or all lives matter. This is a request from an, a structurally, politically, economically, from a justice perspective, oppressed community making a request. So I said, on behalf of certain black activists, they're asking, please don't use all lives matter. It's a, it's a way of whitewashing historic oppression and structural injustices in one sentence. And I got 
skewered for it by Muslim community, which I don't have a problem with, it's fine, right? It wasn't ugly. But again, let people lead themselves. So when Black Lives Matter, I got a call from NPR like, so how does it feel to be a black Muslim? <laughs> what? I don't really know. <laughs> And I said to them, why don't you call, and I mentioned a local black imam, and then they said, well, what is your position, you as Suhaib, on Black Lives Matter? And I was like, to follow what the black community wants me to do, but not to get involved in trying to lead. I am here as a servant. I can carry the water. So I think the same thing. If the Syrians want to share that picture, and we're seeing the majority of Syrians are sharing that picture, can we just like support them, man? We, you know, when Richard the Lionheart, he was a great enemy of the Muslims. Salah al-Din sent two spies to kill him. They were in front of his tent. And you know what happened? They started to argue which one will kill him. They snuck in, you know, they got under the cover of night, they pulled the ninja move. And then they started to argue in front of his tent, who's gonna kill him? He woke up and killed them both. That's us now. Like, why can't we just support the Syrians and be quiet? Like, why do we always have to have an opinion? Why do we have to worry? Like, the black community is asking us to do something. Just like, just do it. Like, we don't have to always, oh, well, you know, brother, like, I took this, gen, you know, this uh, class at UC Davis on, you know, like, sociology and race. And, like, you know, my professor was, I don't care. <laughs> I respect you, but right now, I want to follow these people. What they've asked me to do. I'll do it, but I don't want to get involved in trying to lead another people. That's offensive. So if the Syrians are sharing that image, hey, I, I'm with the Syrians. And, and for me, I think it matters what state of mind would a mother or a father or a community have to be to say that you've let us down so badly that we're actually going to let you see what an upside down, a face down in the sand, stiff body of a toddler looks like. That's what's gonna happen. I mean, that is an amazing, amazing accusation on our conscience. And so we should think more about that in terms of the picture. And I was driving uh, when, uh, uh, to the airport, in fact, it, it was Wednesday, I think, when this picture was released, that I, that I first saw it. And I was driving to the airport, my family was already at the airport, they were 18 months old, and um, the picture, when I clicked on it, it was the small, the thumbnail, when I clicked on it, I, I, I actually broke into like a scream and a cry, because I thought, SubhanAllah, like somebody actually felt so neglected, so let down, Four years of a blessed land, one-third of the population displaced. Seven million out of 21 million, either internally or as refugee status. And nobody did anything. So they put it out there. They put it out there and said, this, is this going to move? And guess what happened? People did argue. But there was more in the last three days discussion about Syria than has ever been in the four years since the conflict began, even before the birth of ISIS and ISIL and all the other garbage that came on. So it worked. It pricked the conscience. It worked. So if we're distracting ourselves by questioning, as Imam Sahib rightfully said, if we're distracting ourselves by talking about whether to post and not to post and who should post and when to post, then you are in the, in the, in the like the, deep, deep mindset of slacktivism, clicktivism, all of that, because at that point what you're saying is, I have the luxury and the elite status of editorializing what's going on, on the online. We don't have that status. We simply don't. If you've seen the face of that Palestinian boy, the teenage boy, it happened within like a days of each other, of the Israeli soldier, look at the face of the two young teenagers, the two sisters, or cousins, two cousins, who actually took that picture 
and sent it viral. They had no idea that that's what they were doing. But when they did that, the face of occupation in the face of a 14-year-old showed up, or 13-year-old, and his scream, a scream of passion saying, 60, 70 years you let us rot in these camps that you call refugee camps. And you allowed us as a Muslim ummah to be in that and you didn't do anything. Look at this. Women kicked the butt of that soldier and we got it on video. We're going to let you see it. And if you, didn't, if you didn't wake up after that, then something is wrong with you. That's exactly what the statement was. And I took it to heart. I said, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, these are not people who went to journalism school. These are not people there. And what, at the one instance, the young cousin actually looks up. If you watch the clip well enough, she actually looks up like this to her cousin filming because she knows this is a historic moment. This is a historic moment. Three khalas are beaten. The, you know, I mean, and they, you know what? France Fanon. Read France Fanon. When you talk about the mask, the mask, they actually unmasked the face of occupation. They unmasked in that instant, and you could see the face of that soldier, and subhanAllah, you realize he was as, as traumatized in that moment. So all we're saying is that if you're going to forward some things, if you're going to retweet, if you're going to you know, share things, at least, at least take a minute to absorb for yourself the power and the impact of that tweet or that message or that image, and then have a statement about it and say, this is what it did to me. And then it moves, hopefully, other hearts, inshallah. Zakallah khair.